Well guys, it's early, early Monday morning. I'm trying to get a few things done this morning before I just go. I'm waiting for my customer. They're gonna clean that big new Holland baler out that I told you about the other day that we've got to do a lot of work on. Basically the whole needle yoke is gonna have to be changed, all the needles. I gotta look up there on the knotter and see if it did any damage to that. Anyway, um, I'm gonna try to get some more wiring done on this hay squeeze project. A little overview of a little explanation so some guys now maybe some of the some of the Allison keypads might have uh, uh, a communication network in them but these do not have that um, and okay so here's an overview of our what we've got here on this okay this is basically the transmission harness side of it right here um, You'll see this gray and blue twisted pair. That's 1708 protocol. That's an older, slower protocol. The yellow and the green are 1939 protocol. And the difference is everything that is on the 1708 protocol, there are no can terminator resistors. Everything is built into a transceiver that's inside the, I think they call it an RS-485 transceiver that's inside the control module, okay? And there's no can terminator resistors. Basically, you just need to straight wire it. Just wire it up. You'll wire these two. We'll, we'll basically take these two here and connect them to those two. Take that twisted pair there as one, one set of twisted pair wires. Go through the firewall into our data link connector. And then we shouldn't, in all theory, be able to communicate with the transmission control module. We won't be able to communicate with the engine control module until we get the 1939 setup going. Um, I went out to that truck there and I found in the dash because I got lucky and I saw it the other day and I saw this sitting there and I said ah there's a can terminator resistor I need that and I confirmed that by taking an ohmmeter you should have 120 ohms of resistance across it and I'm right at 119.1 now I'm curious I was kind of looking over this engine harness that's gonna be that one there's gonna go inside the cab Trying to see what if I get in text messages or what I got going on here. Um, anyway, let's let's go over here. I'm kind of curious if some of the older stuff they built on the engine side of the of the can network. They built the uh, the resistor was actually inside the ECM because I'm not really seeing that uh, resistor here anywhere. So I'm curious to see what the resistance is right here on the truck side of things if you're on a like a tractor or something like that like John Deere they call it the can network uh, the trucks call it the backbone that's what they call it everybody has different nomenclature for everything and terminology there's 120 ohms of resistance there so we have a can uh, can terminate resistor either in this harness somewhere that I'm not seeing or it's built into the ECM not really certain about that but I know it's there because I have 120 ohms of resistance so what I got to do is uh, uh, I'm trying to figure out I guess it really didn't matter I didn't get any gray and blue I wasn't as, as concerned about that means it's just straight wired so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take like a this pink and this black and and I'll show you how to I'll show you how to do and, and and it's very important on any of these can lines you need to you, you got to especially especially with 1939 and another thing is I like to do is I like to separate them John Deere uses what they call screening voltage and what you'll have is you'll have the twisted pair the yellow and the green can high can low and then you'll have a black and a red wire one's going to be battery voltage one's going to be ground and those will surround your uh twisted pair and then usually there'll be like an insulated wire or insulated sheath that goes around those as well and the whole thing about that is what they call screening voltage and screening voltage is wrapped around there so it creates a field around that uh, a magnetic field around that uh, wire around the twisted pair that way 
if say this wire is laying across here and you don't have that screening wire voltage and you've got a 12 volt power wire going here it doesn't produce interference if that makes any sense to you guys what i'm going to do i guess i'll i'm going to go ahead and wire the 1708 together with the black and pink and i'll put split loom over them and i'll run those through the firewall i haven't i kind of started tidying this up a little bit but i'm not done with this stuff going into the keypad yet i still have work to do there and more wires to add to the junction here to go back to the other pedal or the other keypad for the other side but what i was trying to explain to you let me get my light is some some of the comments now maybe some of those other allisons have 19 maybe the newer allison keypads have 1939 can but the, these don't have any these don't even have 1708s going into them and it's pretty easy to see here's the keypad and well you can't really tell on here but anyway um there's no there's no 1708 wires there's this is not a smart device all this is doing is putting inputs into the transmission controller that's all it's doing okay there's a power and a ground to basically for supply and supply and, and a ground to it for power and then there's inputs that's all there is there's no it's not a smart device so um anyway so let's go ahead and get uh i'm gonna start making up wires to wire to wire the 1708 protocol here and I want to get the 1939 wired to the data link I want to get a power and a ground to the data link and I have decided if I want to tie into I might just I'm trying to decide I'm gonna use a fan relay too and a fan solenoid for the fan switch so I've got one two three four more five more relays to work with the start relay i've got to figure out what i'm going to do with the start relay here's the here's the situation with the start relay most relays are wired uh with pin 30 uh i wish i had a diagram here handy for you guys but pin 30 is going to be your constant battery power right okay that's, here's a relay right here. I'll show you on the little diagram on the relay if you can see it Pin 30 is going to on nine times out of ten on a relay. This is the way they're set up And this is this means this is 30 or 40 amps 14 volt DC That's the highest it's going to be running off battery power 12 volt DC, but it's rated to 14 volt DC um, 85 and 86 are your switching points 80 30 is your this is only a four pin so you can't run this if if they're a five pin relay you can run them as a normally closed and a normally open relay okay so this is basically a normally open relay it energizes itself to close the contacts to put power from pin 30 to pin 87 okay now if it was normally open you'd be doing the opposite it would be you would be um or, or did i get my terminology backwards there um, if it was this is normally open so it closes when it's energized it closes to close the contacts okay so if it was normally closed it would energize to open and that would usually go to like pin 87a i mean and there's lots of ways that you can do relays you can you can you can wire these relays to where you have a constant ground to pin 30 as well if you're doing a switch to ground which i've done that before and then you can use the signal side of pin 86 for power and ground to to energize the coil to latch the relay to put a ground signal out to pin 87 just depends on what you want to do um so we're, we're using all power but the tricky part to this allison automatic is with the relay um what they're doing is they're wiring the neutral inhibit okay so you're going to have a neutral inhibit con a signal from the control module that's either going to come into pin 85 or 86. One of these is going to be a signal, one's going to be a ground. It doesn't really matter which one, okay? Uh, 
but they're using it on this one to come into pin 86 they're using 85 as a ground but they're using a neutral signal which which is 12 volt DC once it's in neutral and that energizes the coil but the thing is pin 30 they're energizing pin 30 with the ignition switch or the push button starter it doesn't have constant power on it that's where that's where we can't I don't know I can't really use this fuse panel relay because the fuse panel itself is all pre-wired to where all the relays have constant power on pin 30 so I don't know I don't want to cannibalize my I'm thinking about just kind of calling nap or something and having my own relay for the start wired in here somewhere so i don't have to cannibalize my relay box uh that was my plan um i was under trying to think of another way to do that but unless i wanted to i'd have to i'd ha see they're all jumpered they're all jumpered coming straight off the fuses to pin 30. i'd have to cut it back in here somewhere and and do that differently you know that's that's all i could do with it so anyway i'll figure that out okay so i'm making myself a twisted pair to go back in on the 1708 data link to go back into the cab and i've i had run one wire through to measure it and then cut the other one to match it but just open your chuck up and then kind of even them up on the end here and Shove them in there. And I just walk out here and stretch them out. Get them straightened out. And that looks a little more. Looks pretty good. There we go, guys. We've got a twisted pair. Just like that. Works out fairly good. It'll still have kind of a twist in it when you get it off, but... Turned out all right. I know, can't have enough, can't never have enough light, especially when you get older and you can't see nothing. Put this now where I can see it, maybe put the camera over here as well. Try that view. Okay, let that one cool down. I'll move the heat shrink. The heat shrink's a little bit too big for this because I've known just the ones that, if I try to go with the ones that fit snug over the wire, then what happens is I'll be trying to move it down over the solder joint and then it hangs up somewhere and then it shrinks up before I get where I need to be with it. That's what I found. So if I go a little bit bigger, it just gives me a little bit of play to make this work out. There we go. Come on. Yeah, I've got a 
little bit of a chunk of wire or something sticking out there. It's not helping me out too much. Kind of space that whole can terminator resistor right out. I wanted to just kind of since I had all this wire stripped, but I just had my head buried, square up my butt, and didn't think about it till I got there. And well, I had a phone call. I had a bell wagon that one of my customers has. It's he uh, he thought he had a bad lift pump or something on it, and then he called me back. And says, "Nah, I got bigger problems." I said, "What's the matter?" And he said, "Well, I'm getting crankcases full on full of fuel." I set the pump on a, the in, the seal on the, in the injection pump went out. So that's, that's something I need to go do. And then I got a 6715 that customer wants. He bought a John Deere Reman engine. And I mean, it's this. Well, you guys remember the 9620T that we had all the problems with, right? Well, it's the same company, but the owner is different the owner died of that company and i gotta remember i think i i think i put the pink to the blue is what i did on that twisted pair i can't really tell now look at this yes the pink is to the blue and the black is to the gray uh but yeah he's got a reman engine so i told the new owner i said so listen <laughs> i'm gonna i'll put your engine in i said but i am not liable for that john deere engine let's get that out in the front right here i said if you need it in writing i'll put it in writing i am not liable if your engine fails prematurely that's all on you you bought it from them. They sent it to some reman facility that put it together. And I said, we don't have enough time in the day. We both have things to do. He goes, what do you mean? I said, well, I don't have enough time in the day to tell you all the reman horror stories. <laughs> I just, I don't have enough time. Well, I didn't know anything about that. I said, well, you should have called me. And I would have told you. All you got to do is call, and I would have told you what to do. I would have told you which route you need to go. I said, that old 6715, that's an easy engine to do. There's no emissions at all on it. It's just a straightforward engine rebuild. There's nothing to it. Really easy engine to rebuild. So I don't know why you would go down that route, but whatever. I'm not trying to be an arrogant jerk. I'm just trying to give the guy some, you know, he needs to... He needs to just learn these things. That there's certain things he... I guess this guy that took this over is a is the, the son-in-law or something, and he was a banker. So he, to be bluntly and to be blunt, he, he ain't got a clue. He ain't got a clue about the ag side or any of this equipment or none of this stuff. So he... There's a lot of the lessons it looks like he's going to learn the hard way. And one of those lessons is do not buy reman engines. And I tried to explain this to a guy the other day. He goes, well, he goes, why is the quality not there anymore with any of this stuff? I said, well, look at the people. Look at the people in the country. That's what you got to look at. You got to look at the people that are inhabiting the place. I mean, there, there's there's your issue right there. I don't know how, uh, how much... Look at them. Half of them don't even know whether they're a boy or a girl anymore. You expect them to rebuild an engine? Uh, do anything that's critical or technical or anything like that? Half of them don't even know what they are. It's it's They've completely dumbed down this entire populace.
Come on. Get the wire hot. There we go. Now we're doing something. This guy called me yesterday and it was on a Sunday. I didn't really want to go down there, but first thing he wanted to do is he wanted his fuel turned up on his old B model cat and his old freight liner. Well, I went down there and did that and got to looking at the thing and I said, you know your steer axle brakes are below a quarter of an inch, they're probably into the rivets there. No, I didn't know that. Well, you might want to do something like that if you're going to start belly dumping and hauling gravel across that scale because they're going to they're going to check you and you're going to be red tagged. Anyway, I that old truck. The other thing that I had noticed on that truck is I've never. Ah, dang it! The heat shrink. Got my head up my ass here. But something I noticed on that fan on that truck. I've never seen a Class 8 truck with a viscous fan clutch on it. I'm sure some of you guys have, but that's just not very common here. I know that. You just never see that here. You, they, they have air-actuated fan clutches here. And he goes, can you get rid of that? He says, I cannot get this thing to warm up here. I said, yeah, we can put a fan clutch and a fan solenoid and a, a manual override switch on it. I says we can even put the the sender in the head to tell the fan to turn on. But yeah, I've never I've never maybe that's like a flatland deal or something, a viscous fan clutch on a class eight truck, but it's an old truck too. It's an eighty nine freight liner. Which it's an Oregon thing. You don't see anything that old in California. This place is like a gold-painted turd. Yeah, it's all shiny on the outside, but it's still shit on the inside. Yeah, they were, the government forces everybody to have all this new, nice, fancy shit, but nobody has any money because they've had to all go broke doing it, and the state's broke, and it's all just a bunch of bullshit. But, like I told you guys a long time ago, years ago, I told you that the jig was almost up with this country, and it is. Right now, I was reading a deal, and it's actually, I wasn't reading it actually, it was a YouTube video, it's called Redacted, it's a YouTube channel called Redacted, and they did a, a guy had on there, and he said that the interest on our debt right now, just the interest per month, is it per month? I can't remember. It's, it's a billion dollars, basically. But anyway, everybody's dropping the dollar as their world's reserve currency. It's all it's all happening exactly like I told you it was going to happen. The, the, it, the jig is almost up for this place, which is fine. It needs to happen. I You know, I, I hate to be so pessimistic, but... It needs to happen, so maybe we can get... It's like rip the band-aid off. Let's get this over with. Let's get going so we can fix this and do this right and get a country back again with some sovereignty and some freedom in it. And that's what needs to happen. This thing completely needs to fail. 100% needs to fall on its face and fail. And we need to go back to a sound monetary system, get away from this centralized... Fed, the Federal Reserve, and that's one thing. You guys need to go read a book called The Creature from Jekyll Island by Mr. Gibson. 
and learn how your fi financial and monetary and what a fake, propped up, screwed up system you're living under. It's all bullshit, guys. It's 100% all bullshit. The whole thing is. The whole fractional reserve banking system, what a Ponzi scheme that is. That all works out fine until everybody decides that they want to go out and get their money out of the bank at one time. Because what happens is all these banks are just a bunch of crooks. You know, they're, they're professional swindlers and crooks, these bankers are. Anytime you see a banker in a suit, just look at him and go, well, there's a professional thief. You know, what they do is, it, every say, if you put a dollar in the bank, that bank takes your dollar, then they loan $10 out based on your dollar, which is all fine and dandy. It's all digits on a scale or paper to them. But when they've loaned all this money out that they really don't even have, and they're charging everybody interest on this money they've loaned out, and they're making this money. It's all fine and dandy until everybody decides to go get their money out of the bank, and then the bank doesn't have it because they've loaned 10 times the amount of what they had in reserves out already. It's gone. And so people just don't seem to really understand the way the whole system is set up and, and what a phony, fake, screwed-up system it is. And I do a lot of reading, guys, and I know this is probably going to go way over a lot of your heads, but it's called, it's this, this, this monetary system that you're using goes clear back to the Babylonian Empire. It goes clear back to the end. And that's another empire that collapsed. <laughs> Andrew Jackson was one of our presidents, and one of his, he told the central bankers that they were a den of vipers. He's quoted as saying, you are a den of vipers, and I will rout you out. And he did. There was actually three central banks that had, I uh, can't remember the exact dates, but this, this one we're in now, the Federal Reserve, which Woodrow Wilson was blackmailed because he was having an extramarital affair with another woman, and these people surrounding him in his cabinet used that to their advantage to get the Federal Reserve. And I know you're probably going to think I'm a conspiracy theorist and a wacko, but I don't really give a shit. But I just find it very strange to me that the only three major players in the financial market that were bankers, the only three that objected to the whole Federal Reserve system, those three men... We're on the Titanic when it went down. What a coincidence, huh? I'll be damned. Hmm. Did you know that the American financiers, Jacob Schiff and Max Warburg, did you know that they financed the Bolshevik Revolution? Did you know that? That we help that American financiers actually finance the communist takeover of Russia. See, there's a lot of things that people don't know because they don't do any research. They sit there and they watch that stupid shit box, that programming device that is owned by all of the same people. And they get that version of the story and they don't go and do any legwork and get off the shit box and start reading books and finding other sources of information. You need to go out and find information that's been banned because there's a reason this information's been banned, okay? If, if, if things have been banned, you got to ask yourself, why are they banning this information? You know, if this stuff was so easily disprovable, where you could disprove it with factual information, then put it out there in the public light for everyone to see, because light is the best, best disinfectant for anything, right? But no, they ban it because there's things in there they don't want you to know, and they don't want you to learn these things, Okay. So you need to go find these banned books, and I can tell you what banned books, if you're ever enlightened and you want to ask me, and you can read these things, and, and you, you, you can finally have your eyes opened, and then you'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Okay, but anyway, there's a lot of things like that that people that I don't elaborate on too much because I'll get canceled, which I'm at that point now where I really don't care because pretty soon it ain't going to matter anyway because we're all going to be equal. Every one of us, even though you, some of you guys are really financially well off, 
I'm telling you right now that the playing field is real close to being leveled real quick because we're all going to be equally poor. So anyway, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quit with that rant there and uh, I'll wire, I got to wire a power and a ground. So A, the center peg, the white wire is the ground. Purple is going to be the ignition power to the data link connector. And then we'll have the data link connector wired. Without, ah, I got to put the CAN terminator in there. Well, guys, I got the data link wired. I'll just show you. Um, got a power and a ground going to it, so the green light's lit up. Uh, I got to turn the ignition on. Let's climb up here. I don't even have to have the switch. Everything is just kind of sitting here loose till I get everything wired. It's just one of those things when you're wiring things you don't button everything up till you get done and tidy things up so uh your keypad came on now I, i'm using the texa unit because i want to see if i can communicate with the transmission control module as well let's see what happens here so we want to go truck yeah, and we want to go heavy duty. Let's go with, uh, you know what we could do is go through powertrain. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go powertrain. Let's go. Let's see if it'll communicate with the engine or the transmission. Allison, let's just go transmission sometimes. So it's 1708 protocol. So let's go with this first one and try that one. And we have this connector hooked up. Okay, my little red light blinked there. Ignition's on. Let's see if we get any communication. Ah, the green light's blinking. That's usually a good indication. More protocols are detected. Exchange protocol is available in the activation page. Reading errors. Hmm, interesting. What are we going to run into here? Well, more protocols are detected because there's a 1939 protocol on this as well. No fault codes detected, huh? Really? Um... There's got to be some active fault codes because everything was on key off and everything. So I can't believe switch protocol. Interesting. What if we do that? This activation allows you to switch the communication protocol from 1708 to 1939, from 1939 to 1708. Let's see what that does. The transmission is not on 1939, it's 1708. Now we have faults here. Okay, now we've got faults because now we're on, but they're all inactive. Systems diagnostic code number two. Okay, let's clear them. Okay, did they clear? They all cleared. So, I want to go, so we know that that generic way of hooking up to it works. But I want to see, so this would be an Allison Generation 5. I'm thinking this is an Allison Let's try a three, four. Let's try that. And we might be able to go off international thing since this came out of an international. We might be able to go through off international in the in the truck section.
WTEC 3 recognized. World transmission is what WT, I can't remember what the EC, I'm sure it's referring to something electronic control maybe. Maybe world transmission, electronic control, uh, three number three version, I'm guessing. I know WT means world transmission. Okay. Reset of all the adaptation. This is the right, so this is the right one we need to be in. Right here. Yeah, see, this, this is the right one. Okay. So we can communicate with the transmission controller. We know which section to be in there. So now let's go to back to powertrain. Let's go to engine and we go to Cummins. And we want to go to diesel injection. We want to go to EPA 07 1939. I'm thinking this is the one we want to be on down here. Turn on the ignition, it's on. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of throttle position sensor codes and all kinds of stuff going on like that. Yep, lever position, accelerator pedal, PGN multiplex and SA 1939 timeout error, abnormal update rate. So I've got something going on with my CAN. Fan control circuit voltage above because it's not hooked up. Turbocharger turbine input temperature calculated data valid, but above normal operating range. Voltage drop with the ignition off, so I'm going to have to figure out. All right, so coolant level low, of course, you know. I wonder if there's anything. I can do settings. I can do engine high-speed governor. Idle shut down. Um, PTO options. Lots of PTO options. Let's go to multiplexing. We can do that too. Uh, I might come back and do that later. Air compressor switch address. Clutch the switch addresses, multiplexing, lots of multiplexing stuff here to do. Manual fan switch. Where is the coolant? Ah, there we go. Finally getting into gear down, pulse width modulation, uh, on off highway, vehicle speed. I don't see anything for, but I can get into, I can get into the, um, no vehicle parameters, huh? Lots of multiplexing stuff here. Vehicle on off highway. No, well, they're not really giving me like a vehicle parameters. Some of that stuff you can disable that coolant level sensor. Sometimes you can, but I've got insight. I'll hook up insight to that, but okay. Okay, so I got one throttle. So I got a, the only code. See, I had this code was active. It's inactive now. Accelerator, pedal, lever, position, sensor, circuit voltage below normal. Uh, now we got a 431 because I haven't wired the idle validation yet. So, um, I had to figure out, which I actually got lucky by looking at the diagram and wired it right the first time. So, remember your signal is going the other way, coming back from the pedal. So the signal will be wired to the center peg, okay? Trying to figure out... I almost need to take, I'm trying to think this through here. So if I'm switching signals, I almost got to almost jumper this to the next one. No, 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 would that work? Yeah, yeah. I need this wire to split and go to the other pole and then, then I can switch from this pedal 
over to this pedal. That's what I gotta do. But now I know I can solder these three together, put the heat shrink on them, and then I can run the idle validation wires up through. Uh, so maybe I'll... Well, you know what, I, I gotta put the... I gotta put the rest of the split loom on it. Um, so I guess I'll take them off here and try to run that split through, loom through and get that done, then solder them. Okay, so now we got these three wires here and I gotta figure out which one's which in that plug. I'm gonna have to go back and forth between two different books. So, let's go over to Cummins Quick Serve. And I just wired this one up here. The top one is the throttle position. The other one's idle validation. So D, E, and F. There. D, let's see, D is going to be... Um, kind of hard to... I put my glasses on. Can't see it. Idle validation off. Idle signal. Idle, val I, idle validation. Idle signal. So obviously the top one goes to the top one, so would be D. I don't know why they got this A, B, C here. Anyway, D, E, F. F is going to be the signal return. Okay. And idle validation off signal, idle validation idle signal. And so if I go, so I know that... D, E, F, if I go back over to, where is that? So if I go over to this, I've got um, D, E, F. So this is F on the far side, E, D. And so I have to trace these back to here. Let's start off with D, I guess. D would be 1, 2, 3 over... I think one, two, three, and that should be. They're saying pin twenty. That's kind of yeah, hard to see. Uh, one, two, three is going to be wire B ninety nine U eighteen VT. They probably change it down here, so it's going to be this this one right here. So what pin number is that? Eight, seven, four, six, five, two, I think. So that should be pin two. Okay, so pin two goes to D. Um, okay, pin two is gonna go to D. Um, so what's the signal return? Which one's that one? That's gonna be F, right? Let's go back over here. If we're looking at F, Okay, is signal return. And that's coming off the ECM. We're not too concerned about that. Switch return. So they're not really telling you what F actually is on the damn thing. Um, you know, on this one. So we know looking at the Cummins that it's going back to the ECM to the signal return. So we're going to hope that it's the signal return here, which is pin 3. So, obviously, if... So 1 and 2 is... one's going to be auto validation on, one's going to be off. Um, i got to get... i got to keep my glasses on for this, because then I'm going to have to get some kind of light to shine on that. I think the pins are 1, 2, 3 in sequential order from right to left on that. I guess or numerical order, I should say. Um, let's put this down here. Let me read this. Uh, that's right, you can't do anything with that the way it is. Uh, I gotta get a screwdriver to pot that connection open. this connection open here so I can read it okay. 
Uh, and I think you can only read it on one side. So we're looking for these here. And then I want to make sure that my wire... So we know that number two was that B99 year, whatever the hell. Which is the second one over, like I was saying. it was It's actually right to left, not left to right. Um... Yep, there it is, B99U. Okay, so we know that's that's correct. Uh, all right, so we know, uh, let's go back and look at this, get my mind right on this. We know that, uh, we know that, let's start off with our signal return. We know signal return is gonna be number three. Okay, signal return is going to be number well it well it didn't yeah it's going to be number yeah it's going to be number three right signal return so we know it's f so if we know it's f then we know it's coming down here to pin three okay and there's one way we can confirm that uh you'll be able to have a ground signal with your power probe on that and if we turn the key on, we're going to have all kinds of codes now with that unplugged, but... Or, no, well, what we can do... Like that, and we can just probe the end of these three wires. And figure out what we got here. Um, let's turn the key on. Okay. Uh, where is my power probe at? So we know that pin 3, which is going to be this one right here, should have a ground in signal. That has a ground signal. Um, that one's 5 volts. Both of these are going to have 5 volts because they're not using... It's not throttle position, it's idle validation. So anytime the switch is in off idle it's going to basically it's a switch if you look at the diagram over here on insight you'll go over here or quick serve you'll see that see how the contacts close it's a switch in there it's either off idle or on idle so all that's doing is switching the five volt signal from one pin to the other and the signal return obviously stays the same we just got to get them right we got to make sure that pin d is going to auto validation off signal idle validation off signal so what pin is idle validation off signal on the signal returns pretty easy so pin wait i'm already losing i'm getting texas and it's screwing my train of thought up uh pin d let's go back over here pin d is going to be so we'll see B A D is this B ninety nine V right? No, that don't make any sense. They've got the okay C B A C C B A D. It's it's this ninety nine U wire. That okay? So the ninety nine U wire. That's the one that has to be. Um, going to so number two that's going to d okay d on this other plug in here which you can't really tell i mean so it's going to be going to what color wire here then i've got to figure out what color i want to make the wires on that so we've got A is, so D, God, I can't, I might have to go to the eye doctor, you know what? It's starting to, eyesight's really starting to get shitty on me. A, B, C, D, E, F. So F is orange, E's got to be blue, and D has got to be green on this one. So... Um, we could go, I 
The other one, what I did is I put the yellow one for 5 volt reference. I put the green one for signal return. And I put the brown one for the signal wire. So what I think I'll do now, I'll keep my signal return the same. I'll put the green to the signal return, which is going to be pin F, which would be... Um, which one was that? Was that number... We know that number... God, I get so screwed up sometimes. Um, pin F, okay. Is the signal return. Pin F is this far one. That's going to be on... What? What? Let's see here. F e... It's going to be on pin 7. What the hell, huh? Does that make any sense? No, no, no. I'm looking at the wrong connector. See, you get all... That's the wrong... It's going to be on pin 3. Pin 3. Let's start off with signal return. We know that the green wire... I'm going to make the green wire the same as I did the other one. I'm going to make it the signal return. That way green goes to ground. You know, just like I, I was trying to do that on the other one. Make sure I shut the key off. I did not. I don't want to be soldering on stuff with the key on. Okay. Soldering wire. Heat shrink. Stripper wire. Put a little bit of uh, butane in the torch. This don't really fit right on here. I got the wrong tip or something on it. Hang on, guys. Okay, so, you know, uh, the reason I initially went with switching the signal wires because I had actually, if you guys watched the video maybe last summer, I had one of those Roadrunner hay squeezes that the pack rats got into, and I had, they chewed all kinds of stuff up, and I didn't have any throttles, and I had figured out that the signal wires, that's how I figured out that the manufacturer was switching signal wires. And so, anyway... I'm sitting here thinking about all this, and I'm like, why would you do that? Because the bad thing with switching a signal wire is it's, the signal's coming from this direction. So in order to use, in order to use the switch, the full functionality and capabilities of the switch, if I was going to use the signal wire, I'd have to run the signal off to the center peg from this throttle. The signal from the other throttle would have to come to the other center peg, and then the, uh, you know, you would have to use both sides. You'd have to use each corner, because you couldn't put the same signal on the same line. See what I'm saying? It wouldn't work right. So I thought, why, why are they doing it that way? Why wouldn't you just switch the 5 volt reference from one pedal to the other? I mean, that because then you can run your power supply, basically, in here, and then run switch switch to one here and switch to the other one there. Way simpler deal than the way they've got it wired. So that's the way we're gonna do that. And then I've got this whole other side of the switch freed up. Cause I did, I checked with an ohmmeter. These there's no continuity between these two terminals. So now I can use these three poles on this switch for the for the uh the keypads, just like I initially wanted to do. So anyway, yeah, it's just that makes way more sense than the way that they're doing it. Anyway, um, so what I'm going to have to do now is run another three-wire loom, and I'm going to have to go under the cab, down this frame rail, and go back around, and I'm probably going to have to... 
I got to get this throttle pedal unbolted from the firewall, get it out of there, and then I got to do the same thing. I got to make another plate for that. But I'm going to have to mount this throttle pedal down over here somewhere. But I got to get the throttle pedal out of there first, and then I can run my wires over. Uh, I'm going to have to wire this up somehow. I still got to cut all this shit out of here. There's so much work to do on this. This job is so much work. 